Okay, today we're going to kind of talk about something that I don't usually talk about on the channel. In fact, if you've been here with me for a while, what I usually do whenever things seem to come around to this type of topic, I'll tell you that I've got an elf on my shelf and sitting right next to it is a whole box full of things that I've just set aside because I don't want to have to deal with it directly. Because if I do, I'm going to go off in left field quite a bit and explain to you how people came up with this idea in the first place and things. If you'd like me to, let me know down below. And I will actually do a series and talk about how this came to be. I remember whenever I was a little kid, I'm guessing about eight years old or nine years old, I think that I saw Chariot of the Gods right before this. And my brother and I had a few conversations, and I remember one of them, out of nowhere, we were talking about aliens and da-da-da and everything, and uh, all of a sudden I said, you know, that God in, in the Bible there, he's an alien. And my brother got that look on him and a stance that said, I can refute that real quick and everything. And I go, hear me out. Is he from this planet? Or did he actually create everything from an external place? Well then, by definition, he is an alien to this world. And he got a little bit of red cheeks and kind of smirked. And I remember the look on his face as he walked out of my room and, and walked off kind of like, yeah, you got a point there. And let me know as he was going down the hallway. So that always stuck with me a little bit because whenever I started studying Sumerians and things like that, that's kind of what they indicated too. And they indicated that these gods that lived up in heaven lived in a palace that was covered with pearl and lapis lazuli and all kinds of nice things with a sapphire floor and all of that. And that sounds real familiar to Bible people too. And where we get the idea of what's up in heaven. But they had an idea in Sumerians that this was where the gods had gone to. And whenever they weren't on earth, where they were. In their special abode. In their sacred council and so on. And there's quite a few times whenever it actually shows this in their Sumerian tablets. In fact, whenever um, Adama which a lot believe that where the concept of Adam comes from, who was the first sacred priest and a demigod type, was actually called up to heaven. And he, he, Inky talks to him before he goes, and he goes, don't eat of the food there, thinking that it's like, well, you have the same thing in retrospect or reverse in the Greeks, where if you do eat something in hell, no one can ever get you back i.e. the pomegranate story and so on, right? Most people are probably real familiar with what I'm talking about here. But that's what actually spawned a lot of the Greek tales. And the reason we didn't have any connectives to Greek tales to anything else, except for some loose connections to some Egyptian stuff, was from that. Now that we finally found the library of Ashurbanipal and all these other tablets, we've come to realize that, hey, that flood story comes out of these people. And so do a lot of the Egyptian iconography and things about them. And there's not even a wiki page about it. A few years ago, I had to take and go five or six different places and this guy here and there and made a video about it. A year and a half later, I was able to show you there's a small paragraph telling you about it, but it gets much worse. And I showed a bunch of other things in early symbology and things like that where that makes it connective. But make no bones about it. Whenever the Sumerians talked about their gods, they had this idea of heaven and this idea of people going there and coming back and so on like that too. And in fact, when Adapa, Adamu, had gone to there, he ended up meeting with uh, Demuzi and Ningashida at the Pearly Gates and he was not dressed up to his finestry, but said that he was in mourning for those gods, for they had died before, and they just let him right in, and there wasn't a problem of passing the gates. 
So that was one way to get him past that. And that's recoursed again inside the Bible on the idea that a rich man can't get to heaven and things along that line. And well, you'll have to see if you're written into the book and if you're not, whoa, and you go down to hell or something like that, if you believe. Well, if you don't or not, that's what they were talking about. This here, uh, look at the total bottom of it to the top. You can see people down at the bottom and they have an actual cowling and capes on a few of these people coming down. Some of them appear to have a bird symbology body. But it seems to fade off into the distance and a perspective where there are smaller and smaller people, but farther and farther and a little up on the grid. And this again was showing you that people at ancient times had an idea of artistic perspective, like the ancients had said, whenever, well, uh, the people in the Renaissance, which are ancient to us now, had said they didn't learn anything from it because they saw Lost Coe Cave and a few of these other sites and said, and these people already had it all figured out. We have done nothing new. But in these pictures of these people, you can see that they're forelit and shadowfied, silhouetted, if you will. And seeing this picture the first time I saw it reminded me instantly of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where the people get to come back that were taken from old, uh, you know, UFOs taking people and so on. They show the plain people that had left from off of the coast over here, the eastern coast of the United States, and lost, where they lost the whole group of them. And where were they? Ha, 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 the whole time they'd been gone. But they really hadn't aged, which was incredible. And so they released a bunch of people back to us here on Devil's Tower and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, if you've ever seen it. If you haven't, I beckon you to go see it. It was kind of the first one that we had of like aliens coming here and it's not just all War of the Worlds. It's more like a, a communal type thing, something that we again did in different ways in some of the Star Trek episodes where we found somebody that wasn't quite <coughs> up to par, if you say. <coughs> and then, of course, the question was there was whether we should manipulate them or not or help them out or not and things. Or No matter what, if we're just there, we're going to have something like a cargo cult show up out of this. Another symbology that you see here in the picture is there's four or five, six things around that central object there that are different than each other. And the one in the top left shows a dog, and this dog apparently has a leash on him, leading down to a square box, and I don't know what that means. But in the top right, there's something that looks very much like an ibex or a gazelle and stuff. And uh, where this is, it's actually in a cave in France known as Uf Alashin Cave. So something that dated back into the 20 something thousand years, but we didn't have an exact date on it at the time. It's in France and it was actually destroyed by what they called Nazi bombing in 1944. And so I don't think that people are able to go in this anymore. And one wonders why it was bombed. I remember reading something over 20 years ago now, probably close to 30, that someone had said that there was nobody on that hillside whenever they bombed it. And they didn't just throw one or two at it like they thought there was a chateau with somebody bad in there, but throw a couple of bombs on the chateau. But they actually just tried to pulverize this area and in doing so, they made it all go bye-bye. A little to the right down of that ibex there is something that kind of looks like an ant, like a giant ant or something like that. And then down here just below it in the bottom right before the people there, I don't know, it's something that looks like an elephant with a marbly skin appearance or perhaps even something like that giant ankylosaur, which is like a giant armadillo, but huge but i don't think they ever were in france that was something that was in south america and so on and they've even found ones in a recent time to today if you've seen it where they found them in the whole shell and so on 
which is real neat. Bottom left there, picture below the craft or whatever you want to call this, it looks like to me almost like a giant frog in the middle of or something along that line. It looks strange at best, but it does appear to have an eye in the correct spot and so on. And you can see that there are little legs or flame tendrils holding down below the bottom of this thing on its red and body side. And then it has a disc form. And then that protruding top part, and then on the very top of that there is something that kind of reminds you of War of the Worlds, for it looks like an eyeball set on the top of it. I don't know what this would supposedly be other than what we are looking at and all of us now know kind of what it is. I'm sure a few hundred years ago, if you would have put this picture down, they probably wouldn't have come up with the idea of it. But hey, that happened too with this photograph and a few others as I go through them. But we're just concentrated on this one right now. But uh, this was said that it was uh, people meeting the gods. That that's what this depiction was supposedly portraying. which again puts a little envelope on the whole idea. But you can see the top is kind of a metallic black looking, has that full rim dish around it, and the bottom side of it has a brighter spot, and it almost looks like they chose this spot on the wall that had a brighter spot in it so they could set it on top of it like there was a brightness down below it, but also to accent the effect of the silhouetted people coming up to it, which again, just looking at it then again, looks like Close Encounters, where the people are coming towards the light and going to walk up in there. In fact, there's a little bitty guy, oh, over here. Where is he? There's a little guy right there. Teeny tiny, and you could say that's a kid or something there, but maybe that's like those ETs in the show that's there. Another weird effect is right below the craft, there appear to be a couple of letters here. And those letters um, are right there. And it's just a scribble. But a lot of people said it looks like they have the initials A-R or A-R-I, which is the word airy, which goes along with Aryans too. Now, there's really not a whole lot of pictures of this place. There's some black and whites and so on like that, and some that are pretty rough. This is probably the best picture that we ever had of it, or this depiction that we have here. There are other pictures in this cave. But this was a place that they had met the gods. That's what it says. And again, it was destroyed by excessive bombing. And I don't know exactly where this cave is as a port to the local village there. But what was said about it by one researcher is there was no reason for them to bomb this spot. It wasn't the, the total reason for his discussion either. He had talking about there were four or five times there that they found that a place got bombed out of nowhere and a couple of them were old sites having to do with archeology, span which once you find out about the Ananerbi, and how those guys were hooked up with the uh, Germans and the German archeological department, maybe it had more to do with that than just a regular a bombing of some people or thoughts of a bombing there. Regardless of that, this is apparently not able to be seen anymore. I don't know if since then they've dug this thing back out or done something, but from my understanding, it'll collapsed so it's still there in pieces or whatever it is. But you'd have to dig into it. Of course, that's all dangerous and so on. But now look at those legs that are sticking down off there. And you can see that there's little parentheses around each one that's kind of like glowing a little bit. And then just above that, where it has almost a square in that red. And it looks like two eyes are peeking out of that little square at you. And again, I don't know, a couple of hundred years ago, if you could get somebody to believe blah, 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 and this was the gods, and they came down in their special 
craft of the gods and get it to work out. But I know that if you tried to do it today, everybody's going to instantly clack to aliens and UFOs and a UFO would come down. Am I wrong? It's kind of crazy. This is just one of those elf on the shelf picture type things that go, huh? And uh, the sad part about it is that they are, they apparently didn't get accurate radiocarbon dates from this place. They just got some. And then from my understanding on that, that those got ruined during World War II and bombings and so on like that too. So they were gonna have to go back and get some more charred remains and try to get a date off of it. If they did it in a more modern time, due to our understanding, they'd have a pretty good dating on it, but you can't go here anymore. That black that's all around on this picture is made out of soot, so probably you could take a couple of little bitty flicks off of that and end up getting a pretty good test off of it. One wonders what the dating of this cave painting is. It could be anywhere spanning from, oh, 10, 16,000 BC up to like 26, which is what they were originally thinking, somewhere in that range. For some reason, I believe it's there's a couple of other caves that they thought they knew the dating on, and this is similar time, similar looking. So they went off with that. But strangely, this is not just showing animals and so on. And I recently redid a video that you need to take a look at that shows you that whenever they showed those animals in all the ancient caves, they had little spots next to them. There's always four next to this kind of animal and three next to this one and five next to those. And what is that? Well, that has to do with their gestation period and what basic zodiacal sign or month or moon that they were going to end up being having children. And it seems like, although you can't put all it to it, that what that was saying is we don't kill the mamas till after she's done made kids. We don't kill the kids, so we have to wait through this period right here. And the reason we don't do so is because we're like the elves, living in harmony and so on. And we don't want to ruin this situation for if we just take it out in a natural succession and, you know, not take out certain ones. Just like today when you have deer hunting and they give you a certain number of does and a buck and so on like that to be able to take out. It's a... Uh, kind of caring for what went on. But let me know what you think downstairs is in this picture or what this possibly could be. I mean, one could say that this was like, uh, like maybe a comet hit the earth or a meteorite. Whenever it did, it put up a smoke cloud, which is billowing up and going to change from this into something that looks like a nuclear cloud. But they don't show that, they show it this, which is maybe at the point of a type happening. I, It's just crazy. But also looking at the perspective that they're showing here, this is not something that was far, far away. This is something that ended up coming close. And apparently they came closer to it. And this was, a uh, again, stated as this was meeting of the gods, meeting with the gods. Let me know what you think, if anything, this could be other than, because I know once you see this, what this makes you think. And this is just one little bitty piece of paper I pulled out of that whole big old box over there on the elf on the shelf. So let me know if you want to see more about this concept because it gets pretty deep. I don't want to shove out too many videos of the same thing at once or you're going to go, oh, he all of a sudden went aliens. No, 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 no. I've been going aliens all my life, but I've always been separating it aside because was there or was there not? Is the beliefs in, in the gods and being in heaven, is that what gives us the idea now that we're talking about? Or is that what gave them the idea of the gods being in heaven in the first place? And it kind of leans the second way which makes that box over on the shelf rattle a little bit. Anyhow, let me know what you think. Peace.